All right, everybody, welcome to a new segment. This is what you could consider a sneak peek into potentially a future podcast here once we finally started up in January of 23, except our podcast is not really going to be about sneakers. In fact, it's probably not going to be anything about sneakers at all. Consider this a podcast, if you will, with Mr. Bo Williams here from Soul Swap and LLC. He's got a YouTube channel. You guys have probably already seen him. He's been on the channel before, but just in case you have not, go follow him on YouTube, subscribe to him on YouTube. But I want to talk about a few things for the current market of 2023. I know a lot of people were saying that we might see a recession in, in 2023. Obviously, we kind of went through a mini recession here in 2022, but sneakers prevailed like they always do. And that's the most important thing. Obviously, we had a ton of business throughout the holiday season. It was actually one of our best holiday season. It's not one of our, it was the best holiday season that we've ever had. Black Friday alone, we did over six figures in sales. And that's just a testament to you guys who are watching this channel. And again, even if you don't purchase anything from us, whether you just like a video, you just watch a video, you comment on it, you're subscribed, you follow us on Instagram, the support means the entire world to us. So we appreciate that. But Black Friday was really good. Christmas holiday season was busting for us at both our Scottsdale Mall location and HQ location and the website as well. But I kind of want to talk about some of the plans that Common Hype has for 2023. You guys know Bo sells a lot of shoes as well. He's an individual reseller that a lot of you guys at home can relate to because I know most of you guys don't own stores, but you guys do move some sneakers. He's also a collector. And I want to talk through some sneakers with him and we can talk about the outlook of some of the sneakers coming in up in, in 2023. Now, this year was all about the dunks, right? We got the triple pink dunks up there, those grade school pairs, which was an absolute movie skew, as Incredible. us resellers would call them. Yeah, it was a really great shoe, a shoe that really spiked up out of nowhere, mm -hmm. and which it probably was going to anyways, but I mean, in a matter of two weeks, I bought like a batch of 50 of them. And in two weeks, just when they were shipping, shipping from overseas, yep they went up from like 160 to crazy. 230. Yep. And that was a just a crazy skew. We've sold a lot of those. Almost as many grade school pairs as we've sold Panda grade schools, which we'll get into Pandas later on. But Dunks were just a great shoe and I think they will continue to be a great shoe in 23, right? I totally agree. Honestly, you guys, if you're a reseller, if you're not, if you want to look to invest, maybe not specifically, and maybe some of these that we're going to talk about today, but just in the future. And a really great resource is knowing people that do own store locations and move a lot of product because into you know the investment kind of call with this one it was very quick it was not something that we could really just see over time growing this was something that spiked instantly these triple pinks right here is a great example of a shoe here that i asked around about um a lot of people that own stores were telling me I, i'm from the dallas location i had a lot you know a lot of stores in dallas were telling me about like this shoe right here is selling better than panda dunks right now when i hear that that means instantly there's a need there's a demand people are paying the price and you can kind of know what stores are kind of paying for them and what they're selling them at so you can kind of give them some room to make some money but they need the product especially around holiday time which when you put those two things together it's a money skew like brandon was talking about so uh, our kobe swap meet videos that we went out to kobe swap meet uh, i bought about 10 to 15 pairs of these at around 160 to 180 and if you look at market now they're at least 220 one size i think the six and a half is upwards to 280 to 290 at one point which is crazy but I would agree with Brandon, this this was a really good skew for any reseller this year. Uh, these were hard to get retail, ironically, but the, the ladies love this shoe for sure. Yeah, and that shoe was a shoe we should have bought every single pair of at Kobe's. We're only looking for lost and founds and yeah, that was, that was kind of a crazy skew. And just if you guys are watching at home, if you're a reseller, store owner, maybe if you are getting looking into like actually invest in a good amount of sneakers, hopefully you guys are sitting at home, maybe taking some notes. We don't know everything. This is not financial advice or anything, but I just wanna let you guys know we have some experience doing this. Moving on to another dunk, I've talked about it so many times on this channel. You guys got sick of me buying this shoe, but it just sells so well. Um, I think we've sold 200 and 300 pairs in the past 30 days across all women's GS and men's pairs. It's a shoe that I don't think is gonna break at all. It could keep releasing, could keep restocking people. People will just continue to buy up the shoe. And as much as we all see sneakers here, uh, when you guys watch the channel and we see them just as reselling and stuff, it's just a lot of people don't see these shoes. We've had multiple people come in store, both at HQ and at our Scottsdale location, who've walked in and they freak out because we have a panda dunk. And they, I, one girl in Scottsdale walked up to this shoe, screamed at the top of her lungs to her parents, I cannot believe they have these shoes. She's like, they have the pandas. And she was just in shock. 
the TikTok wave, the Instagram wave, the, the, the whole fashion sneaker culture, it's all been based around this shoe. And as much as the sneaker pages meme this shoe all the time and make fun of it, yeah. it's a gold skew. Totally. Literally a gold mine is totally. what you're looking at with this skew. Yep. And we sell a ton of them. You sell a ton of them when you still sell. It's a shoe that we always try to buy as long as we can find a good price on it. Totally. And there was, there was a huge shortage of those this holiday season, as we've seen. Yeah. Um, Brandon even posted on IG a couple days ago that he needed pandas in certain sizes. And you've seen how many he's bought. Even even on the back end, like I've seen how many brands bought. To think that you guys would run out of pandas is crazy to think we were about. Prepared too. I it, yeah, that's a store that was prepared. Now I know a lot of stores that were very unprepared, and especially in Dallas, we our best selling shoes are a little bit different, uh, which we might get into a little bit later. But pandas was rare. It was rare to find a panda grade school, especially was really hard to find in Dallas this holiday season. Even though they restock all the time in Dallas specifically, it was very hard to find panda grade school dunks. I I had 50 pairs of them and I actually offed all of them to one store and they paid a market on every single pair or over, which was pretty incredible. So crazy to see that that shoe's come out so many times and still just time, it's almost timeless now and it's becoming one of those staple shoes like, and I hate to put it up there, but like the Air Force One is a very historical shoe and it probably is one of the best shoes historically of all time. It's becoming so staple in the sneaker game, and it, I know it's annoying to say, but like it sells. And coming from a guy that doesn't even own a store, that shoe sells all the time. Yeah, and they were stocking like every two weeks between summer. And There's fall. another restock coming in January. Yeah, already. but again, there was not like a restock, a big one in December. Exactly. So supply chain issues, or they just didn't plan on it, and uh, the pair spiked up. Yeah. But moving on from the dunk, yes, it was the year of the dunk, but it was also kind of the down year for Jordan One. So. Yeah. That shoe, 2018, 2017, that's a 325 Easily. to 400 R Jordan 1. Easily. Quality's really good on it. A lot of people are trying to figure out why Jordan 1s are kind of dying just in general right now. It's not really that they're dying, it's just people are getting into new things. The Jordan 4 is on the upcoming right now. Uh, obviously, there's a bunch of dunks and stuff, but this is still a great quality Jordan 1. It's just Jordan 1s aren't really investable currently, and that's just something that a lot of the the older resellers who've been doing this a while um, and people who've done it way longer than I have, even though I've been doing it for about six years thus far. It's just a great shoe, uh, but it's just not investable anymore because people are transitioning to other models. But it, I just, I don't, even grade school Jordan 1s always used to be a gold mine too. When the China market was really, really pumping, mm -hmm. everybody was buying Jordan 1s and China really enjoys that. But ever since the market shifted where US really just dominates all sneakers and those eight through nine and a half sizes in Jordan 1s used to be absolute grill sizes. Money. Now the whole market's flipped. Now you want 11 through 13 plus yeah. because those are really the money sizes when it comes to sneakers. But Jordan 1's still a great shoe. People are still going to buy Jordan 1's, especially if you get a really nice collab Jordan 1, if they do another Union Jordan 1 or any other collab. Yep. Uh, Ama 1's they did, not a bad shoe, good quality, it's just it's not a great colorway, and they, yep. I feel like they've just outdone that burgundy colorway. Yep. But nonetheless, it's a great shoe to still have, but it's just not what it used to be in terms of sales volume. And that's okay. That's just something that you really have to adapt and change with. And even last year when we had a bunch of Jordan ones, I just off a bunch of them just because they're, they're simply not moving. You can't have inventory that just sits and it's just not moving. As, much, as pretty as it looks and as cool as it looks to like have a bunch of inventory and, and, and display it, it makes no sense to keep it if it's not really selling. And that goes back to our 30, 60, 90 day rule, which many of you guys know. But I think a great transition into that is talking about the two shoes that at least made me the most money this year. Definitely these two right here, the Yeezy Slide, Onyx, also the Pure and the Bone colorways specifically. And then the Jordan 4, Military Black. Now this shoe right here, I will say, shout out to Brandon and Good Chefs. You really need to get into this group if they ever drop some memberships or have availability, you really need to get into this group. Brandon made this investment call early, made sure he got his pairs first, but definitely made this investment call early. Men's it's on the wait list, link in description down below. But yeah, I, we were in at 280. 280, and, and I remember got, now. got sold Miami. We were taking uh, military blacks and people were begging me to take them at 280. And I was, I, I bought 20 at that event of men's and I stopped because like, I was like, okay, this is a lot, a lot, you know? And grade school buy-in was around 200 to 220. Go look at grade school right now. That was crazy. Um, that was, it's one and, of the craziest calls in Good Chef history. And one of the craziest ones too is, is Brandon and Tommy actually helping, figuring out why the grade school pairs have the, the factory control issue with the ink on the cage. And a lot of people still don't even know about that, but I learned that from Good Chefs as well. This is not a paid promo, but I really do appreciate the advice that they've dropped, especially on this shoe that really made me a lot of money this holiday season. And one thing I will tell you is I didn't cave on this shoe. A lot of people offered me 350, 340, 360 on this shoe around when that was around market. 
And I could have offloaded a ton of pairs, but I held a little bit because I thought they had a little bit more room to go up. And I think they're oh, they're really high. I don't know how much higher they could go. And obviously this is not financial advice or whatever, but you know, I took the financial advice or just the advice in general from people that I know and made a lot of money on this shoe right here. I actually have zero of these left. I think I've resold over 150 of these men's and grade school combined. And I definitely made the most profit like margin on this one right here. I was at least making probably 80 to $120 per pair. Yeah. Just because my buy-in was so low. I think Brandon's buy-in might have even been a little bit higher than mine was because he kept buying them. I kind of slowed down on him. I think my average cost buy-in for grade school was about 250 and my average for men's was I think 295. A lot of times when these shoes release, I just wish I had a million dollars to just go <laughs> splurge it. Cause it's like, I, I don't, I do enough research to know kind of what shoes are gonna kind of go. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm pretty confident when it comes to that stuff. So when I call it, I'm, I go, I dive deep into yep. it too. Kind of like how Isaac does with Sneaker Invest. He, he goes really deep into it. Mm -hmm. So I wish I had more money to go into it. Obviously we gotta supply the shoes with more right. or supply the store with just, more than military fours. But Going into that for 2023, for the year of Jordan fours, which I really think 23 transitions a lot into still dunks, New Balance, which I'll get into in a yep. little bit, and Jordan threes and Jordan fours. So you've got the Seafoam fours, which look really nice. Really nice. Ben will put up a pop-up picture of those right now. And then you have the Craft fours, which is also a really, really nice. Quality well. nuts on those. So hopefully we'll do some research on those, see if that's going to be as good as military four. I'm not sure. The colorway is a little bit harder to wear on yeah. both of those colors, right? The, the military four is easier to wear. White, black, red, just neutral colors. People love that. The Jordan three reimagines are coming out soon. We had a few pairs, early pairs of those. Mm -hmm. I'm down to one pair left of them. And it's a $600 Jordan three right totally. now. They're, they're still selling so yeah. people are really excited about that because they got that cream yeah. back heel tab which again we'll throw another picture on the screen on those but it'll be interesting to see what happens with more jordan 4 and jordan 3 releases but i think if they keep pumping out jordan 3s it'll become another jordan 4 because i really just think that people are really enjoying those specific models right now mm -hmm. And uh, I, yeah, it's, it's it's pretty crazy the way that market's yeah. going. I'll talk about 11s briefly. They really only release like one good colorway a year on these yeah. and it's always during holiday season. So I'm not sure what we're gonna get in 23. Maybe a blue Jordan 11. I really hope they redo your re-retro gammas. Gammas or legend blues. Totally, we, need, totally. we definitely need a legend blue. Dude, again. that was such a go. 2014 was that one. Gammas was 2013, I'm pretty I think sure. 2013. 2013. Yeah. I mean, they're they're doing the reimagines, which they had the white cement 88s. Mm -hmm. uh, was that 2013 as well or 2011? It was one of the two. But um, they are they are digging back to around the 2010, 2013 era. But last time they mm -hmm. did a retro on a shoe, so hopefully a good 11 comes out this year's cherries i actually thought was a pretty good release I, cool gray's still my favorite yeah, cherries is really good color for yeah. sure it's just they release a lot of jordan 11. They do, it yeah. makes it hard to invest in but in terms of just buying and quick flipping yeah. all day it's just it's clock I, and i know we don't have the cool grays here but i did make a good amount of money on cool grays as well that was more of a long-term kind of hold but right. when you're seeing small size jordan 11s in a cool gray going for retail or under, yeah. that's a sign that there's no way, in my opinion, that they could have gone down even more and we ended up being right. So, you know, yeah. that was a good one that, that went up, but there was other ones that were better, just like we talked about mm -hmm. the militaries and some slides and other things like that. Uh, but that was also a really good one, but I don't sell Jordan 11s as well as probably Brandon does, but sure. Uh, but get into the New Balances, bro. I really, really want to hear your take on this. I want to say the New Balances for last, because I have okay. an interesting take on New Balances. Before and before we go into the Yeezys over there that Bo has, uh, I've got the clothing right here. This is not a promo. I mean, I guess it is kind of a promo, but the Outlook for 23, I've had these sitting right here because as much as I love shoes and I enjoy selling shoes and I really truly like I love shoes. The shoes are a means to an end and the way to create a long lasting brand is to have your own apparel. You want people to rock your own stuff. And I've seen people rock shoes that they purchased from us and that's an awesome feeling, but there's no better feeling than selling something that you designed and something that you made with your brand on it and people rocking that. And I think that's the best part of kind of what we're doing here at Common Hype that kind of differentiates us a little bit from all the other stores out there is we really do have a great in-house brand that we spend a lot of time on in terms of quality design and everything. And we see a lot of you guys rock that, which we really appreciate but we really want to focus a lot on the clothing aspect of things because we think we can make really really nice stuff with great designs with which people can really wear with their sneakers and pair it with their favorite kick so that's why i have the pair of sweats here but going on to the easies 
Yeezy slides, Yeezy 350s. What's gonna happen with Adidas now that Yeezy's leaving? There was an article we can put on the screen that apparently Yeezy or Adidas is sitting on like $700 million worth of Yeezys. That's it's all Yeezy branded stuff. There's also a picture that leaked. If we can find it, Ben, I can maybe send it to you so you can pop it up on the screen right here. They changed the insole of the Yeezy. So instead of it has that Adidas, the Adidas logo, then Yeezy. Yeezy. Now it's just Adidas, Adidas logo. They took out the Yeezy completely yep. on the insole in right. order to be able to sell it. It's still gonna be a 350 model. Now, I don't know what's gonna happen. Bo's really enjoyed Yeezy slides. I've enjoyed Yeezy slides. We both sold a ton of them. Best it's a great shoe. shoe. Best selling shoe of 2022 for me was the Yeezy slide. But it's a huge risk going into the huge. next year of not knowing exactly what's gonna happen. Huge because risk. they could easily, nobody knows what Kanye does. So he could easily yeah. just go back to Adidas and be like, yeah, let's, let's drop all of them. But also, nobody knows what the consumer's gonna do. So if Adidas drops non Yeezy, Adidas, you know, models like this and this without a Kanye name attached to it, what is it gonna do? The to comments it? that I saw were Yeezy 350s. They were basically saying they're gonna keep the retail price. May, most people said they would still rock them even without the Yeezy branding because they just like the shoe in general. Exactly. However, they don't like the retail price being the same since it doesn't have Yeezy's name on it. Such an interesting take though. Like it's, it is crazy to me like how in my opinion personally, like I don't, I don't know what they're gonna do. Like I have no idea because, and, and, and Brandon kind of mentioned it, they are a little bit of a high risk right now. There's a lot, like a lot of shoes release every week. Man. And prices and are already pretty high. Yeah, and they're inflated because of the holidays. A lot of this stuff, even when we have here is, I mean, except for a couple that are inflated because of the holidays. I mean, let's point at this one right here. This thing we were just talking about said 425, it's incredible. Other things as well, but like triple pinks, you know, whatever, we talked about it, but like it is, really hard to predict this stuff right now because I think we skipped over it a little too much. The holiday season has been insane. Like to the point of we've never seen this before type thing. And we don't know what the aftermath of it's gonna be as far as the sneaker market goes, just market across the US economy in general you know, over the next six months. Well, even with the mini recession that we have, people are still buying sneakers. Holiday exactly. season, people are still spending money, right? So but what, if we go yeah. through another recession next year, the same thing will kind of happen with holiday season, just what's gonna be in But stock. what is gonna happen if there is a recession not during a holiday season, right? Or during a hot time during sneakers? Like sneakers, there are waves. There are definitely months that are way better. There are months that are not as good. There's and always gonna be slow months. It just depends on what sneakers are coming out. You had a lost and found that came out this holiday season. People are gonna buy that. Totally. But you, again, like you said, you can't just buy military blacks all the time and then just have a store full of military blacks. You can't have a storage just full of lost and founds, even though that would be great. You could have a storage unit full of them. Anyway, I, Adidas, Yeezys, I, I don't know, man. I, I, I had a lot of success with this shoe and honestly 350s too, but really slides and foam runners a lot for me this last year. And um, I think that it was good to really get through all of these because I really only have like 10 left of slides. I've had hundreds and hundreds, so I'm glad where I'm at. I kind of got my money in them and then got out of it. And I think I can invest in other things that I think would do better over time. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know how people are gonna react to. I'll still buy the stuff though, because if it's a good colorway, I'm in it. Like I really want the bones. I still really want Zebra. I need to really complete the rest of my 350 collection because I really like, I, I'm a big 350 guy. I love the comfortability of them. Mm -hmm. I love the way they look. You know, I always wear short shorts, so that looks good with the short shorts. <laughs> I also have slides. I also have foam runners. I love the comfortability yeah. of both of those yeah. as well. Even though I still have not got the new pairs, mm -hmm. I still have the suit, which is that rubber material. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not that softer material okay. that they made. So I'm an advocate of Adidas. So even if they drop it without the easy, emblem and the Yeezy behind it, I'll still be a buyer of it. Obviously, you start getting into a higher retail, it gets a little dicey, yeah. but you know, I, I, I'm someone that doesn't have a huge collection, but I do like buying what I like to wear. As a consumer, people love it. Customers really love the shoe, no matter what. Right. It'll be interesting what happens with Yeezy. But it brings me into the next and final shoe that we have sitting here, which is New Balance. And I'll be the first one to say it. I've never been a New Balance guy. Let's get that clear. Me neither. But that's only because the colorways and stuff that they've released, it's always been, we've always thought of New Balance as like the dad shoe. Dad shoe. Totally. And they've never dropped like this many heat colors and, and colorways and, and collabs that they've done in different models, like the 2002s, the 990s, the 550s. You have a bunch of different things that they're doing now and it's all really, really sitting well with the, the streetwear community. Yeah. And as soon as those people get on social media, people, you know, mm. do the, the, a lot of people do those grid fit checks, things on Instagram, you have the TikTok people who do the daily outfits, that yep. piece outfits together specifically with New Balance's Yeezy's Jordan stuff like that but New Balance is really onto something with what they're doing right now they're pumping colorways out both for the ladies and for the guys you look at two colorways right here that they did with Kith you have the ALD collabs that they always do and 
it's I think New Balance is going to be a serious problem in 23, which could shift the sneaker market a little bit towards ALDs, which not it's not going to take anything away from Jordan Brand, from Adidas, from Nike, but it's going to add a, a different element to what New Balance is bringing to the table, and it's going to be harder and harder to get New Balance shoes. And your yeah. everyday person who wants New Balance is not just yeah. going to be able to go on the site and grab. The, the really hot sneaker. Like it's it's going to be a different stuff. player in it's the gonna game. It's going to get botted heavy. It's yep. going to get backdoor yep. heavy. Yep. People are going to be looking at storefronts that retail storefronts are going to be looking to get New Balance accounts totally. really up those New Balance accounts. There's going to be connections being made. There's going to be a lot more athletes signing with New Balance, not mm -hmm. just Kawhi. And I think they have Jack Harlow yep. right now too. But yeah, they're really onto something with what they're doing. The price is increasing a little bit. Retail's getting raised a little bit. The collapse up that they're doing, especially with the Joe Fresh goods, those are great shoes, but the retail's really one. high. And it's just New Balance is onto something. And I think it's going to be really, really powerful. And I think you're going to see a lot of people, maybe including myself, that were not big fans of New Balances start to start to wear it. Because I do have a couple pairs of New Balances, yep. and they're mad comfy. Totally. Mad comfy. Yeah, We've totally. done a New Balance deal before. We've got a brand deal with them before. Hopefully, they're watching this video, and, and they're doing Part two. Yes. And the one shoe I don't have in here, which I forgot to mention, uh, Puma. Puma, mm. we both hooped at Kaisi's event. We hooped in, I think the- The mellow ball lows, the yeah, ones, yeah. Like the point zero ones, I think now, they're called. Yeah, I actually brought them with me in case we do hoop yep. while we're here. And it's just my one of my go-tos. I actually have two pairs of Pumas, both the mellow balls. He just dropped his second shoe, actually. Um, they're doing a Rick and Morty 2.0 which is, I have the first one, the 1 but, is nice. but the 1.0 is crazy. Go check resale prices on that. It went crazy. I'm a size 13. I'm pretty sure my size goes for over $400. Right now. And there are sales about four, 450, which is crazy. I, luckily I got them way before that, but Puma, they are very comfortable. And coming from a, a guy that played in college, like that's a very comfortable shoe. I, if I had to choose, it would be Kobe's first. I mean, that, and they're going to retro Kobe's this year. You see that they're doing a pro tro eight mm -hmm. this year. Um, but I would pick Kobe's first and then probably like Mellow's because they really are that good. Yeah. So they live up to the hype as far as those go. All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this mini little podcast with Bo. Thanks again for Bo for stopping by. He's here for New Year's. going to hang out with us a little bit uh, here in Arizona. All right. A couple things before we end this video. January 8th, we're going to be at the Clippers and Atlanta Hawks game in Staples Center. And we're doing a cool little sneakerhead theme night in collaboration with the 24. It's called Crypto Arena, by the way. Oh, it is Crypto Arena. Yeah, now. change it. I completely forgot. Yeah, you're right. It is Crypto Arena. Anyways, uh, we're going to be there. Kais is going to be there. Romy, Never Miss Alley is going to be there. If you guys want to come hang out with us, we're doing a little like uh, discussion board. Uh, we're also doing a free throw competition during the game, and it's going to be a fun time. So if you guys are in the LA area, you guys want to attend that, I'll leave tickets down in the description down below. You guys can go find those. Head to the event. Come hang out with us, Kais. Maybe even Bo. I think Bo, they wanted you to go, right? I don't know. He could be there. We'll see. Um, and come hang out with the 24 people as well. And then number two, we've got God Soul coming up end of January for their New York event. So we'll be there too. Basically, every sneaker influencer is going to be there. God Soul is going crazy it's right now. It's going to be insane. So it's going to be a great, great, great event. And we're super excited for that as well. But I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Five videos a week. It's coming to an end. Bryson and Ben have been going crazy. I hope you guys enjoy this because it's not going to last for much longer. <laughs> Hopefully we may go to like three, two, three videos a week and go quality over quantity. But right now we're just pushing out content for you guys. So be sure to just drop a like for that comment down below and subscribe to the channel. If you have not already, be sure to go subscribe to Bo. And thank you guys for always supporting us here at Common Hype. If you don't see another video before the New Year's, happy New Year to you. Happy holidays still. Hope you guys had a great Christmas if you celebrate. And uh, we'll see you in the next video tomorrow. Peace.